Uh, good morning, uh, UNISA students. I want to welcome you uh, in this session of Academic Literacy Workshop. My name is uh, Mrs. Madima. I'll be helping you or taking you through academic literacies. So uh, maybe to give you a background uh, that uh, UNISA it's an ODEL institution. Uh, this acronym ODEL, it means that UNISA, unlike um, other contact university where you wake up in the morning, go to the university and have a lecturer in front of you, this one is an open distance e-learning or online learning, which means that uh, we work a little bit differently from contact university. Hence now we have uh, various support programs so that we can support you uh, in your journey of, uh, of your studies. So uh, hence we have um, various uh, support programs that we will be supporting you. The first one, like I indicated, is academic literacies. So this academic literacies, this will be the program that will support you in various uh, uh, ways. We have um, a four to five types of uh, literacies that we will be supporting you with. Uh, I have just on my slide here, as you can see, uh, just indicated the three uh, main literacies that we will be supporting you with. The first one is the study skills. Uh, the study skills will be helping you as an individual you know, in your cognitive skills. Cognitive skills meaning your thinking skills. When you are confronted with your material, you know, there are the language forms that will be used there. So how do you then uh, manage to make knowledge and then think to apply whatever that you are learning? So this is one of the very critical skills because for you to be able to understand what you are, are reading or what you are studying, you need to apply your mind. You need to understand the language that is being used there within your discipline. And uh, it is really a, a, a true that uh, language, sometimes it becomes a barrier because in an academic field, you know, we use a very formal language. So, I mean, for most of you as students, you find that um, uh, English, which is the medium of instruction, it is your fourth or fifth language. So how do you then uh, be able to understand? How do you then apply your mind, your cognitive skills to understand what you are learning? So this is now through this program of academic literacy where we can refer you to our other sister programs like DCCD, where they will take you through the study skills, the soft skills. So this is one of the literacies that you will need in your studies. And then the second one will be the academic socialization. So what do we mean by this academic social, socialization? Academic socialization is where now you will be able to understand the rules of the subject or the field that you are studying in. For instance, you uh, students, you will be studying in different fields. So each and every field, it has got its own rules. It has got its own 
a jargon or the language that is used there. So when you are studying, we support you by equipping you with the skills which will enable you to be acculturated in that a subject based discourses because you will be engaged in the discourse within your field uh, so that you are able you know to understand you are able to 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 write in the way that uh, that field you know uh, uh, do their writing so and the third one will be what we term academic literacies this academic literacy is uh, it's concerned now with the meaning of what you are you are studying you are able to make meaning of whatever that you are reading in in your field of studies you are able to understand even the nuances of that particular uh, field you are able to have power that you are able to engage with your fellow students, you are able to uh, engage with your fellow, uh, you know, scholars, and then you'll be reading what the scholars within that field are saying. And then you are able, you know, to form or to, to, to make meaning and develop some new knowledge. Because as a student, when you read, or when you study within your field, the main idea is that you will also contribute. You will also uh, produce knowledge, new knowledge, after some scholars have done uh, the research in that particular field. So academic literacy equips you. It gives you all those skills that will make you uh, be uh, this student who, who will succeed in your, in your studies and then you will also contribute in that field of study. So uh, I can even mention some of the other literacies that you will need in your studies. You will also need, uh, you know, skills like information literacies, which is now how do you source for some information, maybe from the articles, from the library, how do you I get you know the articles that are relevant to your studies. We also have now a uh, literacy like how do you navigate you know through the 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 the, the system or the, the your computers and whatever. Uh, so all those things you know to say if now you have to go through uh, to my UNISA, how do you navigate? So th those are the literacies that will support you as a student uh, so that you can succeed in your in your studies. Um, so for you to acquire all these skills, we are going to take you through step by step. We are going to uh, give you the, the, the strategies, you know, the, 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 the skills to say, how do we then acquire all those literacies? First and foremost, uh, as students, you know that when you register, you're going to get your study material. So the, the issue now is that uh, how do you uh, approach your material? How do you read? That's why now we have uh, indicated to say, how do you read for, for academic purposes? For you to be able to 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 read to read well or maybe to pass your assignments and do well in your exams and whatever you need to have reading skills i have um, you know taken some expressions that you need to bear them in your mind to say reading as an academic student it should be a priority not an option you don't opt to say today I read. No, today I don't feel like reading. Reading is a priority. You know, when something is a priority, it's, it's a need, it's a necessity for you to do well. 
you don't uh, opt to say, no, today I'm tired, today I don't, I'm not in a mood. No, there's no mood here. You need to read, you, might, you need to prioritize in your reading. And uh, another bullet that I'm emphasizing uh, on the issue of reading for academic purposes is that reading can never be replaced by technology. Uh, sometimes, you know, we, we think uh, because, you know, we're living in this technological world, then technology will just replace us, you know, to read. No, technology in essence, it enhances your reading or your study. Because when you're reading for academic purpose, remember, you are studying. So technology will enable you, you know, to understand uh, some of the concept better, you know, it makes you, uh, it's easy for you to get even the information because, for instance, if you're looking for a meaning of a, a terminology, you can quick, quickly go to Google, type the word, and then you can even press what if you want the pronunciation of that word. So technology enhances your reading or your study. And the other a, 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 a line or phrase that I found it very, very, very fascinating is that, uh, you know, when you, you first go to school, you learn to read. You know, your teachers will take you through to say, this is how you read. But later, which is now, as students now, as academics, you read to learn. So when you are reading there, you are learning. You are formulating, you know, some new knowledge. So, so it's, it's no longer just a matter of reading just for the sake of reading, but you read to learn. And when you learn something, then you are able to comprehend, you know, some of the, the, the things that you didn't know. So, a reading should be done with comprehension. By comprehension, we just mean the ability to decode and to understand whatever the text that you will be you, you will be reading. It could be visual, it could be written text. So you decode, you you decode the meaning to say what is this um, concept or what is this um, text that I'm going through mean, and how can uh, I make it more understandable? So you need to read with comprehension. Um, so for you to read with comprehension, uh, I'm going to show you the reading techniques. There are two reading techniques that will assist you in your reading. The first one is skimming. And what do you mean by skimming? Uh, Skimming is when you are reading the passage quickly. And the, 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 the reason why you need to read quickly is because you will be reading a lot of materials. So if now you don't uh, acquire this skill of skimming, then you, it will take you, you, you know, maybe hours just to read a, 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 a chapter or to read whatever the text that you have been given. So we give you the skills to say, skim through. Because now when you are skimming through, you, you are able to find the main ideas in the text. You are able to ask yourself, when, when you're reading, you're asking yourself uh, what I call the seven WH questions. Who, what, where, when, why, why, how. So wh when you are reading a text, you're asking yourself, you know, what happened? Where did this happen? So you, you're formulating the questions. You're searching pieces of information like dates that will help you maybe when you are uh, responding to the to the questions, the names or the names and then the events that happened there. Then because you are skimming through, you don't have to read each and every line. line. You skip now to the last paragraph. To, to find what is the text all about. You, you take the, the first paragraph, read it quickly, you jump to the last paragraph, which will give you, which will encapsulate the summary or the conclusion so that you can get the main ideas. 
you link what you read on the first passage, finding the main ideas, jump to the last paragraph to find the, the, the summary or the conclusion of the main ideas. Then you will be able to make meaning. Remember, I said academic literacy, it's when now you make meaning of what you are reading or of the text that you are reading. So after you have skimmed through, another technique that you will use when you are reading is what we call scanning. Scanning normally we think, you know, it's when you put a, doc a, 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 a document on the machine and then it scans through. Yes, even in your reading, you will do a lot of scanning, which is now the information which will help you maybe to quickly find the, the, the information that you need. Like, um, you know, you, 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 you want to know what time is the, 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 the bus leaving, Say you are studying and then now you have to catch a bus and then go home and whatever. So quickly you scan through the information. OK, this is the timetable of the bus. This is the time timetable maybe of the load shedding. You know, we have now load shedding schedules where we need to know that, uh, you know, uh, we have got um, for two hours, we won't be having a, a power. So all the, that information, we call you. You scan it through, so that you it will you will be able to know to say, okay, if uh, from five to seven we don't have power, then I can take a nap and then I can wake up and then. So all those things, it's uh, it's is the information that you will need as, as a student. So these skills that we're giving you, it will help you, you know, to to be able to be uh, on the on the look to say what is happening. Um, now, I, I spoke about the two uh, strategies. So now, here are the tips now in detail to say, if you have to read, say you have um, registered six modules or seven modules, I mean, it, it's a lot of, uh, of reading that you need to do. Therefore, you need to, have to be able to read faster. And then reading faster doesn't mean that, um, you know, you, 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 just, you just read like a newspaper. Remember, you are reading for knowledge. You're reading to learn. So if you are reading to learn, what are the uh, tips that will help you now to go through this uh, lot of material? like I highlighted on the on, on the skimming slide, you read only the first sentence of the paragraph and then you are able to get the keywords. You are able to get the, the, the key concepts. You are able to get the main ideas. Then you skip to the last sentence of the paragraph and then to say to 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 find out what is the author saying on the first paragraph and then on the last paragraph, then you link those uh, uh, key concepts or the key ideas and then you you start now uh, extrapolating the keywords, the phrases, and then you remember you are reading fast. You ignore some little words uh, such as it, it to be all those articles. You, you, you ignore them because remember you, you all that you are focusing on is to get the gist of the matter. What is it that the author is saying? So you, 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 your focus is on the keywords, is on the key concepts, is on the main ideas. So you look for those key points, and then when you are you are you are reading, you are marking, you know, the, the, those thoughts, those main ideas on the margins. And then you use all the tools you, that are provided, the list, the bullets, the sidebars, and then you take notes, you know, and practice, you compose your own possible questions because you know that eventually after you read, you are going to answer to the questions. There will be questions that you will be needed to respond to in your assignment, in your exams. And what is very, very critical, something that maybe we think ah, is not important, is to read with a good posture. You know, when you are reading, when you are studying, you, you can't be studying and then um, 
you know, in bed. You, you, you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, say you are studying. How are you going to take notes? How are you going to uh, mark whatever the, the, the key thoughts, the key ideas and whatever? So make sure that when you are reading or when you are studying, you must have a good posture. Good posture meaning you are sitting upright on, on a proper chair and then so that you can be able to take notes and whatever. And lastly, you need to practice. Reading needs a lot of practice. You know, I, I cited an example to say if you want to be a superstar of, of some kind, whether soccer or netball or whatever, you need to practice. You, ca you cannot be a superstar that does not practice. So even the reading, you need to practice and practice and practice. And by practicing, it means you must read a lot. As, as a student, you need to read a lot. So, brings me to the benefits of reading. I indicated that uh, reading needs practice. So, by practicing to read, you improve your spelling. You know, when you see the word, you know, over and over and over again. You are able now to improve your spelling, to say, oh, okay, this is how the, the word pneumonia, it, 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 it's spelled, because you will see now that, uh, no, 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 it's not you, what you thought, you know, the way that you pronounce it and the way that you spell it, those, they, 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 are, they are different. But the more you see the, the word pneumonia, psychology you you will never thought that there is a p on psychology but there is the more you see that word you are able now to spell it better so those are the benefits of of reading uh, it extends your vocabulary it develops your comprehension the more you read the more you develop your understanding of things the more you stimulate your mind you know i i i indicated that uh, if there is a something that is addictive you know is reading which is a very good addiction for you as a student because once you are addicted in reading the the day does not go by without you reading whether it's your study material at unisa whether remember you will have um prescribed books that maybe will be prescribed for your your, your whatever the modules that you're doing they will be recommended books that you need to enhance whatever that you are studying so it is very very important to develop the habit of reading because now uh, you you are not going to focus only on uh, your prescribed book whatever the word has been prescribed for that uh, particular module then you are able to source some more information so that you can, it can you can have more knowledge you can expand your mind what are other uh, scholars or other theorists or whatever, what are they saying about this particular uh, subject matter? So reading is very, very, very beneficial for you as a student. So hence now you must be able to read in, a, in the right way. You need to have skills of reading. It's not something that just come automatically. It's something that you you develop is something that you, you you acquire and then the only way you acquire it is through reading um you know it it is also good to 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 develop a, a a habit of even reading for entertainment and enjoyment you know it's it's very good because um when you you read a lot uh, you even for entertainment it, it is good for you because you you learn a lot you know i i normally say when you are a student you need to be up to date with current affairs hence there i have a, an expression that well-read people are interested and interesting you know you become an interesting uh, a person when you read a lot because you have information your vocabulary is expanded you are up to date with current affairs 
because let me tell you whatever that is happening in in your environment i mean most of us we are here in south africa you need to be up to date you need to be up to speed with the current events because the knowledge that you you're supposed to develop it, it does not come from from the sky it comes from what is happening within your environment so i will encourage you to read a lot uh, you know reading should be a culture we need to resuscitate the culture of reading yes i know um you can watch your soapies and whatever maybe just to relax your mind but let me tell you that uh, reading as a student will take you very 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 far and you will succeed actually in your in your studies so i have taken a, a comprehension test which uh, deals with the critical reading because so remember as uh, students um you know you you have to be critical you must be critical thinkers you must be critical readers you must be critical writer uh, writers so um i just took this uh, comprehension or this text uh, so that i can read for you because even when you are reading you need to follow uh, you know all these uh, 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 commas, the, the, the exclamation marks, and whatever, because that's when you read with meaning. Is that a, a reading with comprehension to show that you understand what you are reading? So all those diacritic marks, you know, the commas, the full stop, it, it shows you that you understand that now I'm rounding off a sentence. Now this, when I have a comma, it's like a, 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 you saying end this, end, end, end. So when you read, don't ignore those diacritic signs because it, it, it sort of interprets the meaning of what you are reading. So I just want you to listen to me when I'm reading. You will be following me uh, so that you can follow all the diacritic signs. So I took this um, a, a text which says why biodiversity matters. Food, fresh air, clean water, medicine, a stable climate. Life on Earth provides the essentials of daily living for everyone. Wildlife inspires and fascinates us, and our open space are there to enjoy. Not only are species and habitants valuable in their own right, it is in our own interests to take care of them. That is because our future is bound up with a healthy, thriving natural world in all its diversity. But we are in danger of losing the range of a variety of life on Earth. One in four mammals species, one in eight species of birds and potentially millions of smaller species could face extinction. Wildlife habitants are disappearing at an alarming rate. This loss is already a problem for millions of people around the world, particularly if they depend on the land for a living in damaged environment will hurt us all. So when I'm reading here, if, if you listen to me carefully, I'm trying to follow all the diacritics and so that I can interpret the meaning of this a text. So this is how you should read, but you, you know, you need to be applying all those um, techniques that I have shown you. You skim through, you're asking yourself the WH question when you are reading such text, because you know that at the end, you are going to respond or answer to the questions that will be uh, in a form of your assignment, your portfolio, your exams. So uh, this text, it makes us to think, you know, it applies to, to all of us that are 
if we don't take care of, of the environment that we live in, if we, 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 we kill some species, you know, that we have in our environment, because now when they say the smaller species uh, could go into extinction, they are facing extinction. So it means then we are taking, we are not taking care of our environment and the dangers of not taking care of our environments, it's a very, very, uh, something that affects our lives. I mean, recently you might have seen the, the, the felt fires in Cape Town that destroyed uh, UCT libraries and whatever. So, you know, the, the issue of biodiversity, it's, a, it's very, very critical. So, so we need to take care of our environment. So you see now what I'm doing now, I, am, I, I was reading the text with comprehension, with understanding, and I can also apply, you know, the, 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 the knowledge to say, wait a minute, what is this text talking about? And then, yes, then I can give it even a topic to say, uh, if we don't take care of, an, of our environment or the effects of not taking care of the environment, because now we are losing some species. So what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to interpret what the, what the text is all about, you know, about the climate, about of not taking care of our uh, environment. So, when you are reading, formulate the question. You can come up with your own topic because you are reading it critically. You are reading it with understanding, with formulating uh, the, the, the knowledge, the, even the new, new knowledge. So, I'll, I'll be referring to this text as we will come to the aspect of writing. So, after we have, I, I have read, or you have read uh, the, the text, uh, that in your case, it will be your study material that you will be reading. Remember, the ultimate goal of reading is to write, where you're going to put pen to paper. So now, after we, we, you, you have mastered your reading, you have made your notes, you have paraphrased, now you come to the application. Because the writing process now is where you are applying what you have read, what you have learned. Then you put it now to say, okay, now I have um, paraphrased, I have taken the, you know, the, 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 the keywords, the key concepts, I've paraphrased, I've sifted uh, what is chaff, and then you know you 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 know now now I have the 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 gist of the matter. So the writing process, which is now where you will be uh, answering to your exam questions, your assignment questions. So what is this writing process? How are you going to? approach your writing because you don't just read and then just start writing you need to do a lot of preparations you know before you you start writing um i have um described uh, the writing process like a recipe you know when you follow a recipe a recipe is when you follow some instruction maybe when you cooking whatever the meal to say you follow it chronologically there should be some stages that you follow you don't just uh, you know just start writing and then how do i approach my uh, writing what is it now uh, that you you need to follow you you follow uh, that uh, your content the, your format, your certain structure, you know, it, 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 it includes a lot of things. Your language that you'll be using, the punctuation, your spelling, because now you're going to apply what you read on, 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 on paper now. So let me just uh, 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 expand on the issue of the recipe. 
for instance, let's take a very simple uh, a recipe of uh, you maybe making your eggs. When you, whether you want your fried eggs or scrambled eggs, you know, you follow a, some particular steps. You don't just uh, take your, 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 your fry pan and then put it on the stove and then take the eggs and then just put it. You, you follow you, you follow some certain steps that um, take your frying pan, put it on, on the stove, and then you put the, the, the oil, whatever the oil that you use, you allow it to heat up. Then when you see that, you know, your oil is heated up, then you can put your eggs. If you are scrambling them, of course, you will scramble them if, you know, you want to uh, fry them, you allow them to simmer. And so you see each and everything that you are doing for you to have nice eggs. You don't just do it haphazardly you know, and then you just put uh, oil, put the eggs and so everything. So it's the same with writing. When you write, you follow some particular steps. And in your in, in your in your writing, creativity and originality will always enhance your writing because you, you, you're not just writing, you know, like literally. Some of the things you have to analyze, you have to interpret, you have to come up with, a, with examples that are relevant because there is so much power in writing, in how you write. Because if you don't follow the steps, you know, your, your, your writing should be incremental to say you start from this level, you come to this, you come to this. So you, you, th there is no creativity there. There's no originality because you need to showcase to say, this is my observation. If, if I might refer to the text that, that I read to say, my observation in terms of uh, uh, taking care of our environment or our, our this climate change or taking care of the, 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 the species that we have. I mean, you find that um, maybe you might observe that, uh, you know, people maybe at the sea, you know, people just throw some plastics there in the in the in the sea and then those plastics, they are going to choke, you know, the the the, the habitants of the seas, you know, the fish, the sharks, the whatever. So your observation, and then it makes you aware of what is happening in our environment. We take care of our, our environments. If you might have noticed now, you find that um, those uh, plastic straws, they are no, they are no longer used now even in restaurants and whatever because the reason is that is that uh, we want to take care of the environment because people throw those straws you know all over and then they ended up in in the sea and the habitants of the sea they end up uh, going into extinction because when they eat those things they choke they die so now with, with, with the process of writing, you, you have the observation. And when you write, you showcase your, your powers of what you have observed, even the knowledge that you have acquired, and even the recommendations or resolutions that you will bring. So um, I have um, a, a, a highlighted to say, the, the the process of writing is like following a recipe. So now, when you start writing, indeed, you must have a plan. You must plan your writing before. Remember, we haven't even started to, to, to write. We are still planning. And this planning, it is done in, in, in a way that we call brainstorming. You brainstorm to say, how am I going to, you know, to, to, to approach my writing? So you start by jotting down the ideas, you use the keywords and phrases, you formulate some plot lines, you use some flow charts, you mind maps. You know, there are 
uh, people who who think before they, they 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 do their writing they think by maybe drawing boxes some they draw uh, maybe lines or arrows or some they draw pictures is then that they will understand they visualize what is it that they want to approach this particular uh, topic so uh, it is very important to say please before you you, you write brainstorm but by brain, brainstorming if you just put that word literal it's is that there should be a storm in your brain is because you are thinking to say how do i approach this piece of writing if we refer to the text that i i read what is it that um you know that text is is telling me what are the ideas there why should we have how how do you uh, preserve you know the, the 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 species that might go into extinction what are the measures that we need to take so all those ideas that are in your mind you are brainstorming them before you start writing and um, simply uh, when you write first of all you will have your introduction your introduction is very 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 critical because the introduction sets the tone of the topic to be discussed. Uh, the topic that I gave there is, is well, on the text that we read is that um, uh, does biodiversity matters? So you can you can come up with your own topic because you are setting to the tone to say, okay, in this topic of biodiversity what is it that the text is or the author is telling us so you need to in your introduction they say your introduction should be short it should be gripping it should be enticing it should be inviting it means then the way that you will uh, you know start writing your introduction it should be it should be gripping it should be inviting to the reader so that when the reader uh, see you know the way that you have uh, put your introduction he will be uh, captured you know to say no i want to i want to understand what is this uh, a writer which is you now as a student what is it that she is saying it, it must you, you must use catchy phrases the catchy phrases will get the reader hooked you know to be engaged in whatever that you are you are you are you are writing uh, i just gave an example there to say if for instance you are given a topic that that says i remember how angry i was so in in your in your introduction you can use even idiomatic expressions that 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 you know it's sort of um a you know, it captures the mind of the reader to say, if now this person is saying, instead of saying, I remember how angry I was, and then you start in your introduction, you just uh, put an expression, idiomatic expression that says, the inferno within me began to blaze. So it's an idiomatic expression that, that shows that, you know, you were very, very angry. But you see now you are playing with the language that will captivate you know the, the the reader so your introduction is sort of highlight you know what you will be talking about in the whole a uh, uh, piece of your writing or in your compression text or in the text that you will be right uh, you will be writing so your introduction is very 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 uh, uh, good it, it, it needs to be you need to use some catchy phrases and it shouldn't be long, you know, um, maybe five lines, because remember, a, a introduction is a paragraph. So that paragraph shouldn't be sh long. Maybe five lines, maximum seven lines. Actually seven, I think it will be even longer, but at least five to seven lines, because you are sort of a, a, a highlighting what is it that you will be a discussing 
So that is your introduction. So once you have a good introduction, then I'm telling you, your, your, your writing, your paragraphs will just flow because you will now be formulating your paragraphs, but the, the, the introduction sort of sums up or paraphrases what you will be uh, discussing about. So the, 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 this, the, the second aspect, of course, of your, 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 your writing will be the body or the paragraphs. You know, the body, which is the development of a events, a series of events that will be happening. Um, it is formed by several paragraphs. Each idea forms a paragraph. If, for instance, you are um, in, in, in the text that we have uh, just read, we are talking about to say, how can we then, um, you know, try to, to save these habitants? How can we save our environment? So each and every idea that you will be coming up with, it should form a paragraph. Don't lump or put together different ideas in one paragraph. So if you are thinking about, uh, you know, the, the, the beauty of having all these species not to go into this, this extinction, so it means then one idea uh, in this paragraph will, will talk about uh, the, the good thing about this species. And then the other paragraph will, will say, how do we then save this species? What are the precautions that we need, we need to take for us to save this species? So you see each and every idea will be forming a paragraph and those paragraphs will be escalating to the climax. Each and every idea uh, uh, increases, it, it, it escalates, it goes higher up until to the climax. And when you are writing those, um, you know, paragraphs, you, you need to show that um, your writing is developing to the climax. You use some linking ways such as similarly, besides, because you are some, sometimes you are comparing, uh, and then besides this, this is what we need to do. However, we are we can still save our our species, uh, so that because we all need them in our environment for our uh, welfare. So all those linking ways, you know, you 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 will be using them as you are coming with those uh, paragraphs, with those paragraphs, that, uh, and then up until they reach a climax. Because you want to make sure that uh, your paragraphs flow from this idea to the next idea. And, and then that writing, even when you are describing a scenario, it, it makes it, it makes a reader to understand that, you know what, your paragraphs are flowing. You're flowing from this idea to the next idea to the next idea, and then incrementally, and then going higher and higher. So it is very, very, very important because your, your body actually, it is where all the ideas that you're having, uh, the thoughts, you know, the what can we do, what can we not do, it's, it's, it's where you, 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 you develop your argument or your discussion. Lastly, you will have your conclusion, uh, which is some, some they call it the resolution. Uh, the conclusion is, is the last paragraph that ties up all the loose ends. And the, the, the word resolution there, where, where some of the authors uses, you know, referring to the conclusion. It's when now you remember when you take a resolution, it's like when you are giving your recommendation or your views uh, to say, yes, when you conclude there, you will sum up, ties up all what you, had, you were discussing about. You're reaching the finality 
the reader can tell that you know what you're coming to the end end so this is where now you also contribute to the topic to say in my view or you know this is how i feel about taking care of our environment to say each and every um you know community member or each and every person should take this precaution so that we can preserve so that we must not have species that will go into extinction and you can even use some other examples of uh, what happened i think you 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 have seen that uh, there was a um, a time where people were killing these rhinos they wanted to get the rhino horns and whatever i mean right now as much as i'm not 100 percent sure about the you know the the the, the 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 status of how many rhinos do we still have how many died but it's it's a large number because people were killing these rhinos, you know, they've got this belief that those horns, they sell them to wherever and get large sums of money. So now when you, you conclude, you, you also draw some of the examples of what has happened. How can we preserve these rhinos? How can we preserve, you know, maybe elephants or, or whatever? So now you, you, you bring your own... Um, understanding you bring your own conclusion to say you urge maybe the society to say let us not uh, kill you know these uh, uh, inhabitants maybe of the of what whatever the species that we have because they are very very uh, critical in the in the field of ecosystem if you don't have some of these species then the ecosystem is disturbed so now you are coming up now with your new knowledge because as a student you need to develop new knowledge remember research is somebody's knowledge that a person has studied so you also contribute to your field of, of studies so lastly you will now on your last sentence which now you will be wrapping up you you must use strong words or a strong sentence that you close with a, a, a sentence that will always stuck in the mind of the reader because you 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 are concluding with this very very strong words and which makes someone to think you know to say okay what is this student saying or it is you you, you leave a mark you know because remember as a student you are also generating the knowledge generating the new knowledge so this is what the writing process it's all about it it, it it needs to be you need to be original you need to be you know critical because you are also uh, coming up with a uh, new knowledge so um i came up with uh, some stages of writing process remember what i have been explaining it flows to this now because now we are coming now to the the final product which will be the writing so still when you are writing um you must take some st stages you have what we call the pre-writing pre-writing can ties uh, tie up with the the brainstorming because you are contemplating on how do i approach my writing you know you're asking yourself those uh, seven hw questions you pose a question to us yourself you know as, as you're writing as, as you are reading the text but then you are formulating now some questions how do i you contemplate how do i approach this piece of writing so this pre-writing you are busy collecting and formulating ideas you are mind mapping Remember I said some people think uh, in boxes, some think in pictures, some think in drawing arrows. So now you are, you are, you are busy now 
a, a, a planning to say this is how I'm going to approach my my uh, writing. No, I just gave a silly example of saying if you are planning for a birthday party, obviously you know you start brainstorming. Okay, the this is the list of things that are that are needed on 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 the on planning for a birthday party. Uh, obviously there will be a cake, there will be a flowers, there will be you know a setup of your you know how you want. Uh, the tables uh, or, or chairs to be to be set up. So all those things, you know, they come under the pre-writing because you are planning now to say this is how my birthday party should look. This is the theme. This is the color. All those things they 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 it's, we call them free writing. It's pre-writing because you are just um, it's just a, 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 some ideas, some list of things that you you are thinking I will need. So you will even draw some illustrations. Okay, uh, the the guest of honor will be sitting here. You know, so all those things we call it um, pre-writing. And then the second phase will be the drafting. Now you are putting pen to paper, the drafting phase. So I indicated there that the word draft just suggests a rough pre pre preliminary written plan. Because when you, 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 you write, you, you must have your draft to say, OK, you know what? This is what I'm thinking will, will be my plan. You draft it. Drafting, now you are writing. You are writing your plan down and then uh, sometimes you substitute to say no, 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 this word is not relevant and then you eliminate some of the words, you substitute some of the words to say no, instead of using this, let me use this. So you are busy writing, but as you're writing, you're, you know, you can you can you can write something and then you said no, man, I used a this this terminology is not suitable let me use this one so that is now your your, your draft you are drafting you are writing on on a paper now so scribbling and then what what is the purpose of this um at the drafting phase the purpose is to uh, have your to organize your work to be coherent to be logical your paragraphs, remember I said your paragraphs, when you write your paragraphs, uh, there should be a, a, a flow of ideas. There should be synergy. You know, they, they, they should be coherent. You, you, don't, you don't just start by a sort of a concluding idea and then it comes before. So the drafting phase, it allows you to ponder, to think, to say, oh, okay, no, I mean, this idea should come here. This idea should come. So, so you are organizing your work so that the, it should be coherent, it should be logical. So this is a very, very critical uh, phase also in your writing. Um, you know, if you want to get good marks, you know, some people, they have first draft, second draft, third draft. You know, a, 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 a good writer, if 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 he or she is writing about something, say for instance you're writing uh, your your thesis, I'm telling you you can have four five drafts and say ah, no this one doesn't make sense. You even change maybe your topic, and then to say no this one is not suitable and whatever. So the drafting phase is very very because it's where now you sort of have something rough, and then you look at it and said okay. This draft, is it OK? Uh, am I satisfied? So it's very, very critical to have a, a, a draft. You can write once off and then you are done, especially in your assignments or your portfolio. You, 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 you have time. You must make time, actually, to, to have a draft, second draft, whatever, up until you say, OK, no, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm fine now. Then, you come to the editing phase, which is the last, last leg of your writing. The editing phase is also very, very, very critical because uh, the word edit, remember now you had your, your, your draft, one, two, three, whatever draft up until you said, okay, 
I'm happy with this draft. Now you go back to your draft and uh, you edit it. Edit means simply means to check and to correct before you click that uh, submit button of your portfolio or of your assignment. So before before you you even think of clicking the button send button, you need to give yourself time hours, you know, to edit your work, you check whether you know your spellings are correct. You know your you know the the the, the terminology that you have used is it fine or is it ambiguous? So you correct everything. So in 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 so doing, you are revising the content of what you have written you are organizing you know your 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 work you know is the grammar that i use correct is my presentation you know up to you know so so you edit you you critique yourself because you say no 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 this this terminology is not it's ambiguous I, I, it doesn't it has got double meaning or it's, it's not it's not clear so you ensure that your ideas, the ideas that you have presented there in your content, it's explicit. It is it is without any ambiguity. It's understandable. Every person when you read that, a reader will be able to understand what you are saying. So that is the last leg of your writing process. You need to have your draft, you need to edit it thoroughly. Actually, I even suggest that uh, maybe you can even give it to your your peer or someone who can look at it with a different eye to say, please edit for me. Because some of the things, you know, you you know, if you have done something over and over, then it slips your mind, it slips slips your your eye. But if you have now a second eye that can pick some of the you know small things, then you are sure that. Um, your work, you are, you, are, you, are, you are satisfied with the work that you have produced because you have that followed all the steps that are needed. So my last in closing, uh, my last last slide will be a referencing. Uh, let me explain that uh, I'm not going to deal with referencing in detail because um you know the issue of referencing sometimes the, the 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 colleges they prefer a certain style but i'm just going just to give you just a generic uh, a, a way of referencing or, or even what it means um the purpose of 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 referencing is to avoid plagiarism Plagiarism, uh, I have put it in a very strong words to say it's an academic criminal offense. I put it that way, you know, criminal offense is something that you can be jailed, that you can be fined and whatever. So, because I want you to take it very, very, very seriously to say in, in an academic field, we don't plagiarize because that is considered as a criminal offense. Um, there is a policy about plagiarism at UNISA, uh, and you need to uh, 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 read that policy because if you found to have plagiarized, you can even be expelled. You, your, 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 your studies can be terminated because that's a criminal offense. You don't take somebody's work without referencing. So, uh, hence there, I put uh, it in, in, in bold and in a, in a very strong weight. So, UNISA uses a Harvard or an APA referencing style. And then, as I have indicated, subject to discipline preferences. But this one that I've picked here, the Harvard and the APA, is the global one, which is used uh, globally. I mean, so UNISA uh, has 
adopted this Harvard or APA referencing style. So the, the, the referencing uh, of Harvard or, uh, and, or APA, uh, you use the, the, the author's surname uh, and the year of publication. Well, the details of referencing, I will give you a, maybe a topic on its own where we will delve deeper into the, 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 the referencing. And then, but it will be prudent for you to also check what um, your, your, your department, what is the, the, the referencing style that they prefer. Um, so why do we reference as students in our writing? The reason why we reference is to give credit or acknowledge the originator of the idea. The passage that I have read, uh, you know, it's somebody's idea. So I need to acknowledge to say that passage that I read is, is was not written by me. It's somebody else who wrote that passage. Therefore, I need to acknowledge the originator of the idea. And again, it shows that when you acknowledge, you prove that um, um, your, 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 your work is based on solid research. You know, the beauty about academic field is that um, uh, you read the work of which, which has been done actually by other scholars. And then all that you do is to acknowledge them and then you can expand on that research to say so and so uh, say we need to preserve uh, our, our environment and then give the reasons why we, we shouldn't have some of the species to go into extinction. Therefore, in your view, this is how maybe we should go about. So you are expanding on the research that was done by someone else. And it shows that whatever that you are contributing to the, the world of that knowledge, you are not basing it from nothing. You are also feathering uh, the ideas of this uh, scholar who said something about preserving our environment. So, um maybe I can I can indicate that um, we are going to develop a lot of uh, uh, videos that you can go and and listen to the YouTube uh, in for each and every topic because uh, I thought that if we we you know maybe we we, we, we go deeper or in detail with these topics, uh, we might not even finish our workshop, but then it's better if we don't uh, lump everything together because otherwise it will be too much to consume. So we will be developing these videos that you can go and listen on YouTube on different um, topics like uh, learning styles, uh, referencing, you know, how do you uh, a, a, a approach your assignment question, how do you analyze them? So those are the topics that we will develop them individually so that you, you know you shouldn't have a, something too much you know to consume on this a, a workshop. The workshop is just to a, lay the foundation to show you that uh, you know we will be supporting you in your studies and there is a program called academic literacy and other support programs that uh, different, uh, you know, colleges will be supporting them with. We also have e-tutoring that maybe you are familiar with. So um, I want to thank you for making time to uh, attend this workshop. And, and I can assure you that uh, this is not the end of this uh, a, a workshop. We will be supporting you throughout your studies. Like I said, we will send you the information 
that will let you know to say now you can go to this uh, platform and go and listen to uh, you know details about referencing details about you know learning styles details about how do you read uh, how do you approach your uh, uh, your, your, your assignment question, how do you analyze them? How do you synthesize the information? So we want to thank you uh, so much for making time and attend this workshop. And uh, we hope that um, this workshop will help you, will assist you in your studies. And lastly, we, we would like to uh, request you to uh, go and fill in the survey uh, to say how did this uh, workshop help you? Uh, did it help you? Will it help you in your studies and, and you know going forward? So there will be a link that will be sent to you uh, for a survey for you to complete. I thank you.